Hi everyone, welcome back to Steve's Garage. In today's video, we're actually in my laundry room and I'm going over stripping off wallpaper. This is Zinser Wallpaper Stripper. I found it at Home Depot, along with this big scraper and your typical grout sponge. With the three of these things, you can get your wall to come pretty clean from all of this wallpaper glue. This glue is at least 30 years old based off what I know about this room. So it's been on there for a while. Luckily, the wallpaper came off cleanly it just left behind all this glue. If you try to scrape this off dry, you're not gonna get anything. Best case scenario, you get a little bit of dust that flakes off. Worst case scenario is you start to mess up your drywall, which is what you don't wanna do. That's an even bigger problem and more work. So this stuff, you just spray on. Wait two to five minutes for it to kind of break the glue down, and then we can come back with the scraper. So. Go grab a drink, watch some other videos of mine, and we can come back in two minutes. If you feel the area that you sprayed, it starts to get a little tacky, but then that glue sticks to your fingers and it's really gross. So just let it do its job, wait the two to five minutes, and come back when it's good and ready to be scraped off. So when your two minutes is up, get your scraper and just scrape away. You really don't need a lot of pressure. The more pressure you use, the more likely you are to mess up the drywall itself, which you don't want to do. You can see that there's some residue left over there. That's probably a low spot on the wall or something like that. That's where your sponge comes in. Just sponge it away and your wall is good as new. Here's another area that I've been working on. And as you can see, it's a night and day difference between the glue side and the clean side. I just want to touch on a couple details here for a second. You can see the residue of the glue on the sponge. You want to have a bucket of water to rinse that out. This is going to dry hard as a rock and you don't want it stuck in the sponge. So after every time you use it, just make sure you rinse it in a bucket. You want to make sure you keep your scraper clean as well. I've just been running the edge of it along the five gallon bucket as I go. It's a little dirty here, but it does get rock hard when you're done. I have some pieces from last night, like this chunk here. I mean, it's just crumbling. So. You want to make sure everything stays clean because you want a nice clean surface to scrape that paint with. This whole area is a great example of where the sponge should have been used. I didn't realize it at the start, but this is a joint here. And so you've got a lot of mud and tape and I damaged the drywall. I'm going to have to smooth that back out. It's nothing that can't be fixed, but it wouldn't have happened had I been using the sponge instead of that scraper that scraped a lot of the wet mud away. Overall, just take your time with this. It's a bit of a tedious process. You have to wait for the spray to break the glue down. Then you have to scrape it off. You're not gonna get it in one shot. Don't try to. You're gonna damage the drywall that way. But if you need more than like two or three applications, you'll also damage the drywall because the paper's gonna be too wet. The paper's gonna scrape off with the scraper. And that's an even bigger problem than anything else. You have to seal the drywall paper and that's just a whole mess. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> After I removed all the glue, there were quite a few spots that I had to re-mud. Excluding the previously mentioned drywall damage, I think in areas where there was paint over mud, it wanted to pull a layer of paint and maybe even a layer of mud off with it. Once I figured that out, I started to use the sponge around joints and that seemed to help a lot more than the scraper. Might not be a sure thing, but I would definitely err on the side of caution, unless you're really good at mudding or you enjoy it. I am not good at it, I don't enjoy it. so. Anything to save me mud and drywall work is just better off. Lastly, I just want to talk about how much product I used. I probably should have spoken about this at the beginning of the video, but better late than never, right? I initially bought the spray bottle because I wasn't sure if I would like it or if it would work, and if it didn't, I didn't want to be stuck with a gallon of glorified water. So I bought the spray bottle, used that, and then went back and bought the gallon jug because I knew I would need more. This room is seven and a half by nine with eight foot ceilings. As you can see, it had a good layer of wallpaper glue on there. Chances are your room is not smaller than this. So I would just go buy a spray bottle and a gallon jug, do yourself a favor and just be done with it. Don't waste your time and money on a bunch of little spray bottles. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have an experience with this product or maybe even another one, leave a comment. Maybe this stuff worked for me and it doesn't work for you. I'd love to know why and if there's a better product out there. If you have any questions, leave those too. As you can tell, I'm very experienced with scraping glue off walls, so I'm sure I can help you out. Share this with all your home renovation friends, family, coworkers, everyone. 
Think about subscribing if you enjoyed it, and feel free to check out some of my other videos. Thanks, everybody.